close the schools, fire the teachers, because AI is going to teach everybody anything that they need to learn. The question is, will it be ChatGPT or will it be Gemini that replaces the educational system? Well, watch this video. You're going to find that the answer is neither of them will, and there's some very big reasons for that. But there is a question that I want to answer in this video, and that is, which one is better at helping us learn and helping us study, reinforcing our learning, or allowing us to develop a pathway to learning more effectively? Hey everyone, my name is Frank, and here on this channel, Learning and Technology with Frank, we look at ways that we can use technology to learn and teach and be more productive. If that sounds interesting, watch this video or watch a few videos and see whether it's a channel that you'd like to subscribe to and if there's some videos that you like. I've been teaching for over 25 years, all sorts of different subjects, uh, some very technical subjects, some more business focused subjects. And in this video, we're going to take a look at AI, specifically ChatGPT version 5 and Gemini Pro to see which one of them will help me learn more effectively. Now to test the differences between ChatGPT study mode and uh, Gemini's guided learning mode, I thought I would choose something that was a little bit technical, that would require a little bit of effort, and also something that I'm very familiar with, which is working with IP version 4 subnetting. I've uh, been a certified Cisco Academy instructor for many, many years, over 25 years. So I've taught this an awful lot and I, I know some of the struggles that students have when they're trying to learn this. So I thought this would be a very good uh, subject to work with. So what I want to do is I'm going to go in and let's see here, I'll put in, can you create a plan to help me learn to subnet a class C IPv4 network? And this is very common and I want to go in here and I want to choose this as a study and learn exercise. So hopefully what's going to happen here is it's going to walk me through. I've put a pretty basic question. I've left it fairly broad. So let's see what chat GPT in study mode does. So it's going to go in and it's going to give me an example. It's going to ask whether I'm familiar with binary numbers and that's actually a good approach. So it has a number of different things um, that it can do, whether it's, you know, when we start with subnetting, we want to make sure that we understand binary math, base two math, true false or on off math, and as opposed to decimal base 10. So that's great. And then there's a learning plan. And this does look very much already. I can see this as a course outline for a, for a, or a lesson outline for subnetting a class CIPv4 network talks about the basics, the foundations of binary, talks about what a subnet mask and what CIDR notation is. So not bad, it talks about practicing, it talks about what I'm going to do. So it says that the suggestion is we can start at step two binary, since I mentioned binary, I can't remember when I mentioned it. So let's take a number at 208. So what I could do is, let's say, you know, can we review binary? And I'm gonna go and say, can we review binary and it's going to go through and absolutely so it gives me the basics of binary now there are a couple of things that i really like about this here you can see first of all that it goes horizontal so that's very important when we're teaching binary math that we actually look at our bit positions across a horizontal plane Sometimes if you're reading material, it'll talk about binary and it'll put it vertical. What I mean by that is you can see here, it gives me my positions of the binary values. So with an 8-bit binary, you can see that each bit holds a value. I probably would have said this is 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, but I like to use base math in order to, to explain these concepts. So there's a little bit of things that I would do a little bit differently. You know, if you're interested in learning how to become a CCNA, let me know in the comments down below. Although I think I would have to start a completely new channel for that. But anyways, we can go in and it talks about this. Okay, that's pretty good. So it goes through the information. So it asks, can I convert 144 into 8-bit binary? So I'll need to take the 128-bit. 
If I took the 64, that would be too much. It'd be 192. So 128 plus 32, this is the 32 position. That would be too much, so I don't want that. 128 plus 16 is going to give it to me. And then I don't need any of the other numbers. So if I go in here, let's see if I remember that from my head. There we go. So you can see what I did is I took the 128 bit. Didn't need the 64, it would have been too much. Didn't need the 32, it would have been too much. Took the 16, 16 and 128 gives me the 144. So I don't need the eight, I don't need the four, don't need the two, don't need the one. Now I better calm down. This isn't a, this isn't a, a course on, on binary math. This is a course on whether or not ChatGPT can help me learn binary math. And 192 into an eight bit binary, well, in this case here, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take that, and we don't need anything else. I don't know if the space will work. Normally I'd break them into, so eight bits is a byte, four bits is a nibble. So we'll go in there and see if it takes the nibbles, and we'll go in there, okay. So I'm not gonna go through, but you can see that I'm, I'm going in fairly well here. Now it's going to go binary to decimal, but we, we won't walk through everything. I like the approach that ChatGPT is taking. And I know it sounds you know, interesting if you're not familiar with this, but I really like the horizontal layout of the bits. That's very important. And I will say that when I'm doing this on a whiteboard or if I'm teaching this in a classroom environment, there's a lot of having to erase or copy paste. So there's, there's a lot here that's, that's quite good. Let's see how Google Gemini does. So here I'm gonna ask the same question. Can you create a plan? to help me learn. In this case here, underneath the tools, I chose guided learning. So I'm gonna go in here and let's see how Gemini does. Now notice, oh, and that wants to actually generate a video. So I will do that later, but not right now, but it's a great topic. And um, so in this case here, it's going in, it's asking me some questions. So it's not coming up with that study plan um, and asking me a question, can you tell me what an IP address and subnet mask are and how they work together? So I'll put in something like, uh, you know, an IP address identifies a host computer or a, um, a host computer and a subnet, this is kind of wrong, uh, lets me know what network it's on. See if it takes this. Now to be, now just so you know, um, a IP address can represent a host, a broadcast address, or a network address. So here I'm saying it's just identifying a host computer. I've made an omission here. I've, an IP address can also identify a network or subnet, and it can also identify a broadcast address on that network or subnet. So you're getting some bonus learning here. But let's see how, how Gemini handles the fact that I've missed something here. So I go in here and it's gonna come back. I'm exactly right. No, I'm not. So that's a problem, right? So there is a host versus network problem in here or identification in here. But to say that an IP address identifies a host computer and a subnet uh, lets me know what network it's on is false. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of the answer, but it's not a complete answer because the, you can have an IP address that identifies a broadcast or a host or a subnet address. So that's a little bit of a problem. So um, I'm going to say, let's go to binary. Uh, can you help me understand binary? So this is where we start seeing the limitations. Um, so, okay, it talks about binary. This does a, in my opinion, a much poorer job than the chat GPT study mode. So in here, this is a very, you know, generic um, explanation of what binary is. Um, you know, it's, I don't really think that this is, is a good explanation. Okay, let, let's give Gemini another chance. Let's move it away from Gemini Flash to, let's go a reasoning. So I'll go to Gemini Pro. We'll pop in the same question here with Gemini Pro. We'll look at guided learning. And let's see if it gives me a more robust answer in here. So now I can go in here, I can say show thinking. So it's mapping out the process in here. It's developing the learning structure. 
and we'll see how it does. Yeah, putting it together. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. So again, it's a little bit light, but it does talk a little bit about a, a three-step plan of the why, the what, borrowing bits, putting it together. So I'll say, you know, good plan. I don't know. So I'm here to learn. So I'll say it's a good plan. If you say it's a good plan, Gemini, it must be a great plan. So now it's going to go through. Again, I could, I could say show the thinking in here. It'll go through and analyze it. Scroll down and see what it comes up. Okay, so there we go. So now you can see I'm starting to get an answer that's a little bit more like the uh, ChatGPT5 answer, study mode answer that I got. So we take a look at here, at the, the subnets in here. But I will say again, even though we've allowed the pro to come in here, I don't really think that, that it's doing as good of a job as ChatGPT5. Um, so I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to give this to ChatGPT at least for teaching me how to do subnetting of a class C network. Now I'm going to also be um, happy to be human because I don't think ChatGPT would be a great way for a student to learn this um, based upon what I've seen it generate. I think this would be a good way for a student to review it if they went to a wonderful classroom with a CCNA or somebody that is actually qualified to teach this in a little bit more of a interactive way. So good news teachers. Good news me, um, there's still a place for us. These are not going to replace at least teaching students how to subnet IPv4 addresses. Maybe the real takeaway from this comparison is that learning is highly individualized. We have students that might struggle with a concept where other students will understand it right away, first time. So it becomes difficult to have an automated system, even a sophisticated AI, that can adapt and ask questions of the student to empathize with the student and really understand the struggle they might be going through. And certainly, although these AI systems can gather information, they can't really gather experience. Now, I'm not saying that our robotic overlords won't one day have super intelligence and take over and scan this video to make sure that I'm on their side so that I can be kept as a pet. But, but until that day comes, I think that the best use of AI is going to be to supplement learning and to support reinforcement of concepts. And in this case, I'm going to say that right now, I think the ChatGPT version 5 study mode is giving me better results than the Gemini Pro. Will this change or are there other products out there that are really good? Well, that's why YouTube videos have a comment section. Comment down below if you've used any type of AI to help with learning, to help plan your own learning, learning for others if you're a teacher, an instructor for your students, or if you have used different tools. This is all great. This is part of a conversation that I think we're going to be having a lot in the future. Hey, you know, if you like this video, if you hit the like, that's going to help other people discover it. It's going to help the channel. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And if you like this type of video where we look at different technologies for learning and teaching and productivity, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That's also an option for you. And we'll see you in the next video.